uh, synchronistic events happening just around me. Uh, it, it's, it was overwhelming at times. And, uh, uh, the world decided to, to, like you said earlier, not, not just knock me in the head, kick me in the jaw, but it took me all the way down. Uh, oh, I went through a divorce, uh, uh, lost jobs. I went to jail. My house burnt to the ground. I lost absolutely everything. And you can't take a person farther down there than I was. The, the, well, I, I won't, you can, but I was down pretty damn far. And, uh, that's when I started asking the question, what the hell is going on? And, uh, me being who I am, I wanted an answer. So, uh, my best way for me to get an answer was to start reading, start researching. So I started, I started with the, uh, the one that most everybody uses, which is the Christianity thing. And, uh, read the Bible cover to cover twice, not just once, twice. Wow. And, uh, I put 110% into that faith. And, uh, I started having some really, uh, I, I started having life around me was a reflection of what I was reading in the book. The synchronicities around me were, were, it was like, I would, uh, for one, for instance, I think it's in the book of Daniel, uh, a passage in there talks about, uh, going into the valley of bones. And I'd read that, read that part of the, the book and, and, the next day, I was driving out of Riverside, California, down into the uh, Coachella Valley where Palm Springs is. And uh, I was living in Palm Springs at the time. And uh, as I was coming down the hill into, into the Coachella Valley, the clouds, there was a full rib cage in the clouds. And when I saw that, it, I got that, that, uh, Download in my brain it said the bones in the valley, the dry bones in the valley, and I was like, "Whoa, that I just what what the hell is going on here?" So things like that just were were constant back at those times. So, anyways, I started figuring out that uh, there was a little bit more to life than the Christianity thing, and uh, then uh, uh, I'd had somebody give me a deck of tarot cards during that time, and I, I realized that there was something there, that those were not just random cards being turned up. And uh, I, I started learning more and started growing more. And uh, then I had my second dream, and that one really threw me for a loop. And one of these days on one of these shows, I, I'll, I'll have to relate that, but... Uh, uh, we're going to try to keep this time down. And so, anyways, after that, I get back up here to Washington, and and uh, I'm I spent a lot of years uh, kind of on the on the uh, uh, I'd say a part time researcher in this stuff because uh, I still had my you know the third dimensional <laughs> mundane uh, <laughs> lustful needs of of mankind and. And I pursued those things, and I I pursued the spirituality on and off, and then I uh, got married a second time, and she would have nothing else, nothing to do with it at all. So that kind of really hampered uh, my research era. But uh, I still I was I was let me say a, a closet spiritualist. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, you know it, it. What what um point of your life was this in? Was this um Five years ago, ten years oh, ago. Oh no, the, this was. Uh, let's go back uh, ten, about twelve, thirteen years ago. Uh, well, actually, I married her in '96. So, uh, you know, from '96 till about, about two years ago, I was with this girl, and and uh, it, I, I kind of had, I didn't have the, the kind of freedom that I do now to be able to uh, explore. Uh, life and explore consciousness. Uh, it was just something that was not acceptable to do out loud. As long as I kept it to myself and inside my head, it was okay. But as soon as I talked about it, I started, I got the, uh, that condemnation, you know? Yeah. So, uh, that's one of the reasons. So, 
That's one of what? the reasons I like that Albert Einstein quote so much, that condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. So That's, that, that's, that's, that's so that's, real. And, you know, with, with such a famous quote by such a famous scientist, you would think that some of these scientists would actually look into it. Well, I'm off to go open the door, and I'll leave you with Tom. Okay. So, anyways, uh, after... Uh, after that, my second dream there, and I got back up here to Washington, uh, my research in, and my interest in this has really uh, taken off in the last five years. And uh, I have grown by leaps and bounds. Uh, I meditate daily, and, and uh, I've actually uh, managed to recreate my uh, couple. I had, a, I had a couple of spontaneous out-of-bodies. Uh, another one when I was 30, besides the one when I was 5. Uh, but at, uh, I guess it's about three years ago now, uh, no, about two years ago now, that I was able to recreate the out-of-body and uh, consciously, intentionally do the out-of-body thing. So, uh, and wow, what an experience that astral projection is. There's nothing like it. there's nothing like it in the experience that I've had yet. Uh, um, I've had a few myself, but unlike Tom, I'm not able to do it on uh, a drop of a dime. It's not a drop of a dime, trust me. <laughs> oh no, it's not a drop of a dime, boy. I wish it was. Uh, I'm I'm I if I if I really uh, have it set in myself that I want to do an out of body. And I prepare myself right. I do my, I eat the right kind of foods. You know, I don't, you don't want to eat anything too heavy. And, uh, you have to be in the right mood. You know, uh, you can't have too many stresses. Stress is a big no no if you want out of body. You know, you gotta, yeah. you have to be able to set all the stress aside. And, uh, you put yourself, you get your body in the right state of mind. And, uh, you know, I'm working on that quitting smoking thing. If I smoke too much during the day, for, I can forget the out of body because my breathing isn't working right. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, it's it's awesome to be able to do it. Uh, not not to take attention away from you, but um, I there's that picture on the East City um, website where James is. Actually, they took a picture of him having an out-of-body experience. And I'm sure the skeptics out there, well, I'm not going to call them skeptics because if they were really skeptics, they would investigate. But right. um, we say that it was done over by Photoshop. But you see James' face with his eyes closed and you see his face coming out with his eyes open. Right. And I remember the first time I saw that, I was just... Wow, I knew astral projection existed because he, I've had it myself. But he's got another shot on there of uh, that uh, Japanese monk. Oh God! Oh Khan. man, that, Khan. Khan, yes. That uh, some some amazing pictures that just kind of blew me away. I mean, it it I you know you look at him and you go, well, how could they how could they do that? Uh, make that picture look like that, you know. Well, I can see where if you set the exposure real long and move the camera, jerk, jerk the camera around or something. Nah, but but no, everything no, there's else, everything else in the background doesn't have the same shadows. It's just his body. Yeah, because if, they, if, if it, it's a movement of the camera, the pictures behind him would have that same streaking and same shadowing. So. And not, and not only that, but if they Photoshop that, um, then whoever did that is wasting their time. They should be doing professional stuff. Oh, no, that's yeah, yeah. It, it's so obvious because I don't know if we're talking about the same picture, but this is one picture where Khan is sitting down, and then you start to see through him, and then he starts turning into a mist, and then he's com a complete mist. And you can see the shape of a human, but not really. And it's just amazing. And 
James yep. took, took this picture and it was right in front of him and and luckily Khan um lives here in Tokyo and I, I haven't had a chance to go to one of his um uh Kunlun classes yet. But it's just amazing and he's one of the prime examples of what they call reaching your dragon body. Yeah, well I'm I'm kinda of hoping that he uh comes back out this way to go to the East City Ranch again and uh I'll, uh, if he does, I will definitely have to make the three hour trip over there. Yeah, I, um, I'm gonna try to get him on, uh, see if we can get him on the show. But, uh, yeah. And we're, um, so the next time you hear us, we'll have James Gilliland on the show. And you heard us talk a little bit about him, and he has a ranch out in Washington. It's just an amazing place, and I'll let Tom explain why, because that's actually where me and Tom met the yeah. first time. Well, the ranch is the ranch is a place that's he's got a, a, a sort of a vortex right there on his property, uh, and there's been quite a few different uh, psychics and 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 uh, uh, sensitives or intuitives that have gone out there and pinpointed the exact same place in his field out there. You know, yeah. he's got the prayer circle there. Uh, the Tibetan prayer circle? Yeah. Right, right. Well, the, there is some sort of an energy vortex there where, uh, it's one of those, one of those, uh, intersections of, uh, what are the ley lines or whatever you want to call them. That's one of the focal points. And, uh, man, the meditations you can have inside that circle or anywhere on that ranch. The energy there is so amazing, uh, and I'm a I'm an energy fiend. I mean, uh, uh, I love that. I'm an, I'm I'm very empathic, so I can I sense what's going on around me and the environment around me. And when I when I walked into that first stepped onto that place, uh, my my chakras just lit up. The vibration started, and I have and that glow went all through my body. And I knew the second I walked on it, or I drove onto that property, because I felt it when I when I first drove onto the property. I felt it while I was driving my truck down the driveway. You know, I was like, "Whoa, this place has got some some good vibes." You know? Yeah. Um, the I I went last the summer that passed, and um, I was lucky enough that Sun was able to pick me up at the airport. And as we're driving in, I felt. We we come right into the ranch, and I felt like somebody put their finger right in my crown chakra, and I just lost it. Just started laughing.